what's going on everybody welcome back Gerald here with your weather forecast hope we're all having an amazing hump day out there so we made it just about or I guess now over halfway through the work week and that weekend is getting close but before we get there we got a pretty major cold front that's going to swing through the lower 48 over the next 48 hours and this thing's going to bring some severe weather some snow and a whole lot of rain to a lot of people and then of course obviously that's in the name cold front a bunch of cold air on the back side of it so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to discuss uh, maybe some hints at maybe the chance of some kind of southeastern snow going into the beginning of next week. And I'll tell you right now at the front of the video, uh, the chances are not very high, but there is at least some chance. So I am going to cover it, but I don't want you to take this as uh, me saying some kind of massive southeastern snowstorm is on the way because right now, at least that is not what it looks like. But of course, we will touch on it uh, because, you know, if there's a chance of something, I would like to, uh, you know, let you know and keep you informed of those chances. So uh, with all that said, uh, if you are new here and you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. And of course, if you like the video, go ahead and like it and share it with your friends that may be impacted by some of this crazy weather over the horizon. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into your forecast. Starting off with radar like we normally do, a much clearer picture across the country than we had yesterday. We just saw this disturbed weather out into the southwest and this is what is going to cause some of that severe weather and snow out into the middle part of the country and also bring a ton of rain to the east coast uh, through the rest of this work week. But other than that, we have some pretty nice weather for much of the East Coast, definitely just about everyone east of the Mississippi having some really nice weather other than you folks down there in the uh, South Florida area from Miami down through the Keys and then up here into coastal New England, but just about everyone in between there really nice weather on this Wednesday. And you see that on satellite as well. Look at all of these super clear skies out here into the southeast. We do have some high level cirrus clouds moving in here uh, through kind of uh, the central part of the country, and that is mainly because of the storm system that is beginning to eject out of the desert southwest and work its way into the plains. So you're beginning to see some of those clouds work their way in uh, from that storm system. So up, taking a look at those hazards right now, you obviously you're going to notice a big blob, <coughs> excuse me, a big blob of blue and kind of purple color here on your map down here into the Carolinas and Georgia. And that are, or excuse me, those are freeze warnings for tonight where we have another cold night, um, you know, in store for us. So the entire state of South Carolina here is in this, except for uh, those extremely uh, higher elevations up here into Oconee, Pickens, and Greenville County, just because we haven't gotten into our planning season yet. And that's the same situation for much of Western North Carolina here. But everyone outside of the mountains here in the Carolinas, just about, uh, you've got a freeze warning for tonight. So if you have planted any crops, make sure you take those measures to protect them. And that even goes up here through um, kind of Eastern Tennessee into the Knoxville area and up through the Tri-Cities. So if you're in any of those places and you have started planting, make sure you go ahead and take those precautions tonight. Other than that, though, we do have some winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings up here into the northern Great Plains for that snow that is on the way. And a lot of those warnings are even out here into the Rockies where, you know, we've just been getting slammed this winter with winter storm after winter storm there on those higher elevations. So moving into tonight's forecast and going a little more in-depth on those temperatures, you can see those sub-freezing temperatures throughout just about the entire East Coast from Savannah northbound. So again, all of the Carolinas likely getting below freezing tonight, all of New England and much of the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys as well. Uh, you will notice that we will have kind of a uh, surge of warm air tonight out here into the plains. Uh, that is because of this system here that's going to begin to pull up some of that southerly flow uh, and bring in some of that warm and moist Gulf of Mexico air for many of us in that part of the country. Looking at tomorrow, we rebound quite nicely, getting well into the 60s and even 70s here through the south and even 80s here into sections of Texas. And that, of course, will help to fuel some of that severe weather that we're going to talk about. But uh, you can see that cold front is going to begin to set up tomorrow kind of like this. And you can see that on the temperature map with this cold air funneling in behind. Uh, and that is going to cause all sorts of problems for us, uh, you know, over the next couple of days. So showing that to you here on a precipitation map, you can see we're pretty quiet today. That continues through much of tomorrow morning before... Finally, the storm system begins to ramp up and we get some snow to begin here into the northern plains and sections of the Midwest tomorrow and also rain areas to the south and east of that. So as we go through tomorrow afternoon, 
the system's going to really begin to organize and you can see this cold front very sharply here on the map with some severe storms to the south here into Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and then snow up here into the uh, northern plains through Minneapolis, St. Paul, and even into northern Wisconsin and northern Michigan. Uh, and that will be tomorrow afternoon. As we get into tomorrow evening, we're still going to have these strong storms working their way through Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Arkansas, but uh, this cold front will begin to work eastbound, and by the time we get into kind of Friday morning, we're really just going to be dealing with snow up here into the UP of Michigan and then up into sections of Canada. But other than that, a whole lot of rain here for the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys, and even you know, more rain down here into the Gulf Coast where we could still be holding on to some severe weather uh, down here, especially along uh, more specifically the Gulf Coast, not as much the southeast, uh, but just more or less the Gulf Coast where we will have that instability hanging on. As we work through Friday afternoon, that rain begins to move uh, across the Appalachian mountain chain. So Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg, Charlotte, Raleigh, up through D.C., beginning to see some of that rain Friday afternoon and evening. And then that continues through the overnight Friday before uh, kind of getting closer to Saturday morning. We finally begin to clear out through much of the lower 48, although still dealing with this cold front likely sagging down through Florida during the day Saturday before then we finally get into Sunday and we have pretty much the all clear for uh, just about everybody. So taking a look at that severe weather threat tomorrow, you can see we have an enhanced risk here over sections of Dallas, Fort Worth and southeastern Oklahoma, uh, but we have that slight risk even further out from uh, kind of Austin, Texas over towards Houston, up towards Shreveport, Louisiana, southwestern Arkansas having that chance of severe storms and it's going to be one of those days where kind of all threats are on the table, isolated tornadoes, large hail and definitely damaging winds with these storms as they roll on through and to give you some timing on that, it looks to really be late tomorrow afternoon so this is about uh, 1, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon you can see these storms are going to begin to fire up here uh, in kind of that area that we just looked at and continue to work eastbound so by the time we're getting towards sunset tomorrow we're going to have a line of dangerous storms here through sections of Dallas, Fort Worth, and up through southwestern Oklahoma. And that's even going to stretch into sections of Arkansas and Louisiana uh, before going later on to the night. And this turns into more of a congealed line of storms with um, straight line winds becoming the, uh, the main threat. And that will be overnight tomorrow into Friday morning before finally by the time we get into Friday afternoon, uh, we really begin to clear up for most of us here in the southern plains. Take a look at the snowfall totals here up into the northern plains. Again, I think that big kind of bullseye will be right here around Minneapolis and up into the UP of Michigan, which I'll show you um, that section of the map here in a second. But a place like Minneapolis, 3 to 5 inches looks to be a pretty safe bet, uh, and that looks pretty likely here as well into northeastern Nebraska and southeastern South Dakota and northwestern Iowa. So, uh, you know, kind of find where you live on the map, and you can see the key down here at the bottom for how much snow we are expecting. Then moving that map now over here to kind of the Midwest, uh, not really much for the Chicago area or Des Moines, but up here once you get into northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan, I think this is where we see the most snow out of this thing. And even places up here into the northern UP of Michigan could get more than a foot of snow out of this. So uh, although this won't impact a lot of people, those of you that do see snow, you're going to get a pretty good amount here into uh, extreme northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan with, uh, you know, half a foot to a foot likely for many of us. So on the back side of this thing, obviously it is a cold front, so we are going to have to deal with much colder, drier weather, and that will really happen this weekend. So you can see it right here on the map. This cold front isn't hard to find. You can see it pushing in from Canada, bringing in that cold Canadian air, and uh, that will begin to sweep through. So as the rain kind of begins to let off for you wherever you are, uh, behind that you're likely going to get much drier, clearer, but colder weather for sure. So uh, you can see these dark blues and even purples overtaking the entire lower 48 by the time we get into Sunday. Uh, and we're well below average, 20 to 30 degrees below what we should be this time of year for a big swath of the central part of the country. Uh, but just about everyone in the lower 48 is going to be below average this weekend. Uh, and that cold air is really going to settle in place and lock itself in for a couple of days, even going into early next week before I think we finally rebound later next week. So now talking about this next storm system, uh, let me go ahead and move this map forward a bit. So this is uh, Saturday afternoon. Actually, let me bring this even further ahead to Sunday afternoon. Okay, 
So this is Sunday afternoon. You can see we have really clear weather expected for just about all of the lower 48, but you'll notice this cold front that pushes through begins to kind of stall out here over Florida. And with that, some of the models have suggested that we could get some low pressure to form along this cold front and kind of ride along the southeastern coastline. So you'll see that here on the European model. As we get into kind of Monday, we get low pressure to form here off the coast of Florida. And as we begin to move into Monday night and Tuesday, the slow pressure gets dangerously close to the southeastern coastline where we have that very cold, dry air locked into place. So uh, this is one of those setups where the ingredients are kind of there. You just really need them to overlap and uh, kind of work their magic, if you will. So you can see this is... Now, Monday night, we have the low pressure. It's just not very strong, and it's not quite far enough uh, eastbound, excuse me, westbound and close to the coastline to bring really any snow before it then finally just kind of fizzles out and moves away. So bringing this a little more in depth here, again, this is kind of Monday afternoon on the Euro model. You can see some of this rain about as far inland as it gets is the Carolina coastline, uh, but most of that cold air is really locked up here into the mountains of the Carolinas. So if we can get the slow pressure to trend closer to the kind of South Carolina coastline and we get it a bit stronger to get enough of that precipitation to work its way inland, it will likely run into some pretty cold and dry air here that could produce snow into the higher elevations of the Carolinas. And uh, if everything were to go perfectly, which obviously isn't a very likely scenario as we've seen this winter, we could even get some snow outside of the mountains with this. So to show this to you on Tuesday morning, you can see we have temperatures well below freezing into the mountains and even into the low and mid 30s here into the Piedmont and foothills of the Carolinas. And that combined with some of these dew points that are really dry could help to bring some evaporational cooling if we do get that precipitation to overlap. So what I mean by that is, again, if we just get enough of this uh, kind of rain to work its way in, it will help cool the atmosphere, bringing the temperature down to where it will finally meet that dew point. And we call that the wet bulb. And uh, that is where we will begin to potentially see... Uh, you know, some wintry mischief if that were to occur. But of course, as I just showed you right now, the models are not very bullish on that. And just another way to show this to you is the chance that the Euro ensembles have of seeing at least an inch of snow. Uh, and you can see as we get into uh, kind of Tuesday and Wednesday, we do have at least a chance here through sections of the Carolinas, but obviously the highest chance is up here into the higher terrains where uh, we're definitely working with more uh, cold air and uh, definitely some topographic uplifting as well to help uh, kind of bring in a little bit more precipitation. But uh, again, even then, these numbers are really not even climbing out of the 10 to 15 percent range for many of us. So uh, if I'm in the higher terrains of North Carolina right now, I'm thinking you really got like a one in five shot of this working out. If you're outside of there here into the foothills and Piedmont, you're really looking at like a one in 10 shot, if that of this working out. So the chances are not very high, but I did want to discuss it just because uh, a lot of these times these systems can become kind of sneaky. And as many of um, you weather enthusiasts out there know, we often see these things trend northwest in the last second. And uh, if we were to see that, we could definitely get some type of snow here in the southeast to talk about. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. We'll monitor that through this weekend, and I'll make sure to keep you updated. But uh, some good news on the horizon. If you're tired of this super cold weather, and I know I am, it looks like we might begin to moderate at least going past a week out. So going into later next week, uh, we look to finally rebound at least a little bit with more equal chances of seeing colder or warmer weather. But we even have higher chances of seeing warmer weather here into the extreme southeast where that southeast ridge may finally work its way back in and return some of that springtime weather. Uh, but until then, we're going to have to get through this cold pattern. We're going to have to get through this cold front and even, you know, the chance of snow in multiple different places across the country over the next seven days. But with all that said, hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all tomorrow.